Let's go. Alright, so today we shall talk about how to start running for the first time. Welcome runners to today's video. Uh, so a little bit, uh, a little run updates of myself. Uh, for the past few days, I haven't been running as much as I like to because I'm hitting my body warning sign, my body giving me some warning signs of wanting me to rest because I had been, uh, when I was running, right, there is a little bit of twinging pain in my arc. So it could be that I have been running, uh, I've been doing a lot of workout. I've been implementing a lot of strength training at home, following a lot of home workout, trying a lot of uh, uh, exercises here and there. So my body is uh, adopting a lot of new exercises. And that's, that could be one of the reasons why there's a little bit of pain in my arc. And I hit the warning, as I already advised you guys, right? You need to uh, pay attention to all the warning signs that your body gives you. So I stopped running for three days give myself a three day break if i very very rarely do not run for at least three days so yeah so before i finally started to run uh, again yesterday which i did a long run of 23 kilometers at 524 pace and i'm so 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 happy to be able to start running again yes running is my therapy so if i don't run i just feel that uh, all over my body i don't feel right yeah, okay, so a little bit about my running journey uh, for the past week. Coming back to today's topic, so before I begin, again, if you're new to this channel, my name is Runner Cow, and I love to do running related content. And if you like this type of content, please remember to subscribe and ring the bell to stay notified. Okay, so I uh, want to talk about uh, how to start running for the first time. Maybe you are really, really uh, determined to start running. Uh, running is one of the easily one of the most accessible sports. Uh, out there so why do people want to start running uh, i believe there are two main reasons it is to lose weight okay look better yes and of course to be healthy to be fit and healthy so uh, this is the motivation that get you started but what is the motivation what is the motivation that will be able to help you to become consistent that keep you going and keep you running in the long run without stopping yes uh, you need to ask yourself why you want to lose weight why you want to become healthy yes for whom for who yeah is it for to find back your uh, self-confidence self-esteem or is it you want to have more quality time for your family so for myself right it is definitely okay looking better for myself is not my main main aim but i will say every time i run finish every time i finish a workout i will feel really really good about myself and feeling good about myself will in turn help to boost my confidence for the day and in turn right, it links to having better quality time with, with my family and as my children run i'll be able to catch up to them yeah because in the past uh, when i run after them i would lose my breath i would not be able to outrun them but nowadays right not only i'll be able to outrun them they will not be able to beat me in a race i would say so yeah this is the motivation that you need to really ingrain into your mind every single day so that you'll be able to uh, keep I'm, I, I'm telling yourself the reason why you get started and why you want to remain consistent and why you want to love yourself and stay healthy yeah, for your family. Yes, looking good and losing my tummy is a bonus uh, and you will be able to look good in the long run too. Don't believe it, just look at all the runners out there. right? They pretty much uh, look much younger than their actual age. Uh. If you don't believe me, you pay attention in future. So you might ask yourself how to start running. So my number one tip I will say is just go out there and just start running and just have fun running. Yes, just put your feet, one feet in front of the other and just run. Yeah, so uh, most of the time, we, a lot of people tend to overthink before they execute anything. Next thing I will say is just give yourself a little bit of target. Maybe today I'm running a two kilometers. So it will really help a lot if you fulfill that particular target. So even if you run, if you have to walk or crawl your way there to complete the two, two kilometers, right? Once you give the target and you are able to accomplish that particular thing that you set for yourself, right? It will give you a lot, a lot of self-confidence to be able to accomplish your, your next run and run after and run after. So you might want to give yourself target for today. It might not need to be distance based. You can even tell yourself, uh, today I'm going to run for 30 minutes, no matter how slow or how fast I go. I just need to complete this particular 30 minutes. So once you complete it, yeah, you can celebrate. Uh, give yourself some targets. So, and you might want to have a very, very simple running plan. 
So uh, I'm oh, I'm an advocate of always trying to keep things simple. Although when I started running, right, I Google a lot uh, how to run. Uh, what are the running plans for running? Uh, follow a particular like uh, you have a printable timetable. You are able to find online a lot of places when you Google. So eventually, I settle on something very simple. Is I tell myself I'm I'm going to run three to four days a week. That's all, as simple as that. And this particular three to four days a week, right? I will have most of my runs very, very uh, short, shorter runs of one to three kilometers. And one particular day, right, where I will run much longer than what I usually run, which is maybe five to seven kilometers. And as, and as I get fitter, I slowly increase the distance and amount of time I ran. So I always, always want people to keep it simple because things that are too complex, you have too many things in your running plan, right? at the end of the day, you will just tear up and throw it away and give up running altogether. So keep it simple. Most important, I want you to enjoy your run. Don't worry about the pace. Don't worry about anything else. Just enjoy. Give yourself a simple plan. Give yourself a simple target you're able to accomplish and the target must be realistic. I don't say that you want to run 10 kilometers on your first run. It is almost impossible. So if you set a target, too high and you're not able to accomplish it or very far away from accomplishing it, it may make you become discouraged and at the end of the day you may give up altogether and telling yourself why am I putting myself through all this I, I just give up the whole running thing. Another thing when you are a beginner right remember remember to hit the warning that your body is giving you yes you need to remember if you feel that after your first run or second or third run you are in a lot of pain a lot of soreness or you feel that uh, you don't really feel comfortable on the particular day give yourself more rest it is okay to miss a day of running on your day on the day that you plan for running so maybe you plan for three to four days a week and your body is in a lot of pain because your body is still adjusting to the amount of volume of running you're putting it through give yourself extra day or you can do some cross training it's not necessary in uh, running is not the only activity out there there's a lot of resources online on google on youtube especially uh, a lot of home workout you can do a lot of aerobic workout strength training so you can uh, switch cross training so that you can give your legs a little bit more time to recover don't put so much impact on it and while you still continue to uh, regain your fitness continue to work out in the comfort of your own home or you can also do other activities like cycling as well so that's what i that's what i did as well so as you continue to run you become healthier you become fitter right you also want to pay more attention to the things you eat ah. So the things that you eat, the you things you consume, right, will also contribute to the amount of time you take to recover and being able to achieve your goal faster and to start to become healthier faster. So all the junk food, maybe you can eat lesser, okay, eat lesser, maybe once a week. So the other thing that really keeps me motivated is uh, tracking all my runs, all the data all accumulated to into one platform or, or online. So nowadays it's very easy to track your run. So you might want to get a like a GPS device like a Garmin to be able to track your run or there are so many apps out there where you can record your run, track all your mileage, uh, record your heart rate, record your pace, so many things. It's very, very interesting to look at all this data, be able to see which day you run, how many uh, kilometers you have accumulated. Uh, a wonderful app like Strava. I'm a big fan of Strava. Strava is not just a platform whereby you're able to track all your training uh, data, but there's, uh, it's like a mini social media platform. It's like a Facebook for running where a lot of people on the same running journey right, as you, you'll be able to give uh, people thumbs up. What they, uh, In the Strava world, they call it the kudos, thumbs up. And uh, being able to encourage one another, give a lot of uh, encouragement. So you'll be able to, one, uh, if you're able to see people also on the same journey as you, you will be more motivated to keep on going because other people is working so hard. You also want to work as hard as them. If either one of you have any accomplishment, right, this will really, really be encouraging for one another. So it's good to inspire people and you also will be inspired by other people as well. So as you get better, you become more fit, you might want to pay more attention to your running shoe, whether your particular running shoe is the shoe that is suitable for you. So when you just started running, right, you might just pick any shoe, right, any older shoe from your shelf and start running. But in the long run, uh, the particular running shoe, if the shoe is not suitable for your feet, some problems might eventually pop up uh, So if the shoe is not suitable for you. Uh, you want to check your running style, your running form, or what type of fit you are, whether you're over pronate, under pronate, or you're a neutral runner. So for myself, I realized I am a runner who over pronate, and I have something sort of like a flat fit. So at the end of the day, I need more of a stability shoe. Because when in the past, right, when I was just using a random shoe to run, uh, in at the long run, after as I rack up my mileage, I start to develop problem on the sole of my feet. The uh, there are some pain. There 
they start to creep in. So you might eat if 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 you want to run for the long run, run long run, right? You might eventually want to choose the most suitable running shoe for yourself. How to be able to identify the type of running shoe that's most suitable for you? So nowadays it's very easy. <laughs> so for us in our country, we have shops that help to uh, uh, look at our running gear. Maybe sometimes they will even record our running style so that they'll be able to tell us, uh, give us advice, the shop attendant. Uh, they are they able to give us advice on what, uh, what type of shoe is most suitable for us based on how we run. So we just run on a treadmill in a shop and they'll be able to give you uh, the advice that you need and provide you the, some of the recommendation on what type of shoes you need. I also have a lot of people asking me this, this question that what is the best brand, which is the best running shoe. So I my reply is always, always the same. There is no best brand, okay? There is no best running shoe out there in the world. My answer is always always the most suitable running shoe for you. There's no best shoe for everyone. Yeah, so that's my answer. <laughs> so as you select the most suitable running shoe for yourself, you also want to pay attention more of your running form. So how to properly define running form? The most simplest way is to uh, uh, that to define running form is your running posture, your foot stride, whether you land on your forefeet, midsole, or the heel stride. Of course, we do not want runners to heel stride because heel stride is the type of running style that will cause the most damage to your legs. And of course, your body posture, whether you slouch when you run or you're looking forward or looking at the bottom. So there are a lot of things that right, you'll need to pay attention to your running form. If you really, really want into your golden years, you want to run into your golden years, you really need to pay attention to your running form so that uh, not just uh, you'll be able to avoid injuries, uh, you'll be able to save more money on your running shoes as well. Your running shoes will not be worn out just as fast because this is one thing that I realized. Right? In the past, my running shoes need to be changed more often, but now right, my, some of my running shoes can go up to 1,200 kilometers and still going strong. So yeah, that's all for the video of how to start running for the first time. I know starting to run for the first time can get very excited and you may speed like a demon uh, or like crazy all this, uh, but please don't. Uh, please run at a comfortable pace. I know you're excited. So most important is run safe, run comfortably and being able to stay consistent. And of course, most important is stay still, 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 still clear of injuries. If you learned something from today's video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel so that you'll be able to stay notified. Yeah, so remember to stay safe and keep on running.